guys, good morning and welcome back. Now today I'm coming to you from Ibiza on board Virgin Voyager's Valiant Lady. Now usually I would begin a video up on the deck showing you around, but today I'm eating. Now <laughs> the food on board this ship is just, I'm finding it to be absolutely excellent. Now unfortunately I have got out of bed pretty late this morning. If you followed my last episode you'll know that my body was just telling me that I needed a long live, so today I've got up, it's just gone 11am, so I've decided to go for a chilled out breakfast where I have come down and got coffee from the Grounds Club, which is the onboard coffee shop, and in there, wait for it, I have also managed to get what they call a trick or treat croissant, croissant, I never know if I'm saying that correctly, however, basically it's a plain one on one side and then dipped on the other and like a sugar coating sprinkle. There's like little eyeballs on here as well. Now, you might be wondering why that's the case. Now, I'm on the Halloween voyage with Virgin for the next 13 nights. So there's a lot that's going on around this ship that's got a, an absolutely, I think, really clever hint at Halloween. So stay tuned and I'll show you more because later in this episode, we'll be going to the Halloween party tonight. But look, do excuse me, because I'm going to eat this right now, and I'll see you out there in the Spanish sunshine on the top deck in a few minutes. Would you believe, guys, that in two days' time it's going to be November, and look at the weather. I'm up here right now in a t-shirt. Yes, fine, I've got a pair of black jeans on, but this is glorious. This is lovely. It's, I think it must be about 23, 24 degrees today. It's a little bit windy, as you can probably hear, so I won't take too long up here, don't worry. But in terms of the plan for today, now, if you followed me when I was here last on board Costa Smeralda, then you'll remember we were docked in exactly the same place. I walked all the way along the coast there, all the way along into the old town, and then I finished up at the old castle, which you'll see if I put a panning round shot on now. Now, instead of that, today, I'm gonna go down. Virgin are running a complimentary shuttle, so I'll be taking the shuttle along to the old town to probably just stick in that area and then I'm probably going to walk back because as I mentioned a minute ago the food on here is pretty good and if I don't start walking a bit more I'm going to put on even more weight than I already have so <laughs> yeah we'll head along and check out the old town so yeah I don't think there's anything else for me to cover off with you up here so yeah let's head down get off the ship and I'll see all of you ashore in Ibiza. Standing up here on the top deck of Valiant Lady, I couldn't help but think this was my second time in Ibiza this year on different cruise ships and neither of those visits will be showing me what this island is particularly famous for and that is the nightlife. If you're not familiar with this place then Ibiza is one of the European party hotspots and I would love to come back and experience what that looks like but not today. On board the ship, if you were looking to spend a day relaxing by the pool, this is probably one of the best ports for it. When do you ever look at a pool deck of a cruise ship in the sunshine and see nobody lying out in it? I couldn't believe it, especially because it was actually pretty warm. Anyway, it's time to head downstairs. Look at the inside of the elevator on a Virgin ship. I love how they turn the back wall of the lift into an information board to keep you right when you head ashore. Anyway, we are now heading down the gangway and getting ready to explore Ibiza. Let me leave you with what the bus journey looked like and I'll catch up with you when we get off at the other side. Right, I've just got off that shuttle bus and I am slap bang in the middle of the centre. This is absolutely brilliant. Now, that goes to show actually, when I docked here with Costa, there wasn't a shuttle bus. Well, there wasn't a complimentary one, so you had to pay for it. And I hate doing that, so I would never jump on it. Now, what that meant was that for me to walk to here, it took like well over an hour each way from memory. Now, that's just saved me so much time. It means I can see so much more of the city 
and I'm actually really chilled out getting here. Now, two things that we're gonna do today. Number one is just, to be honest, head out and explore like the old town around the base of the castle because when I was last here, it was all quite rushed. I had to get up and I had to get back down. So that's number one. Number two brings us back to the topic of Halloween. Now, I forgot to pack a Halloween costume, so I need to try and find something today. I'm hoping that I should find, I don't know, I'm hoping for like some kind of novelty t-shirt, even just a t-shirt with a pumpkin on it would be absolutely fine, rather than a full Harry Potter outfit. So <laughs> hopefully later in this video, we'll find either a Halloween shop or just a tourist shop that sells like novelty items. So yeah, Halloween is tomorrow. I also need to buy candy or sweets for my pumpkin, which will be going outside my cabin door tomorrow night. So it's all go. So on the cards today, let's explore one of the oldest parts of Europe and also try and buy me a Halloween costume. Not that they could be any more contrasting. Last time I was here in Ibiza, I fell in love with this boardwalk section at the front. On one side of the boardwalk, you've got bars, restaurants, cafes, coffee shops, and on the other, you've got this absolutely gorgeous, sparkling blue water. I just absolutely love it. One thing that was really clear from both my last visit and also this visit today was the amount of money that's in Ibiza as an island. Whether that be people visiting the really luxurious hotels and resorts, the money here coming in on boats and yachts and even super yachts, or whether it be the money going into all the nightclubs all across town, it really is very, very impressive. Now, as a British child growing up, I knew of lots of my friends that had come to Ibiza, and to be honest, they never really sung its praises that much. It really surprises me coming here as an adult because I think this island just looks absolutely amazing and I'm very aware of the fact that what I'm seeing is a tiny tiny little part. So let me know in the comments, have you ever been to Ibiza? Have you ever explored further than the town immediately beside the cruise port and would you recommend it for a future visit? I would love to know what you think. Let me leave you to have a look around and I'll see you when we go slightly further up the hill because the view up there caught me completely off guard and is really quite special. Okay, so once you leave the sort of much more modern built up city at the base of the hill and you begin to climb towards the castle, you've got two different routes that you can go. Now, option number one is that you can continue all the way to the castle, which is kind of behind where I am right now. However, as you know, I wasn't planning to go there today, so I thought, well, I'll take the other route, see what's there. This is the most local feeling place I think I've been in all my travels this year. And wait until you see the view. Now behind right now, if I turn round, I'll get blinded by the sun, but you can hopefully see Valiant Lady over there. You're looking right out over the ocean. You've got the whole city in the background here. And if I turn around again, behind me, you've got the castle. So <laughs> this is amazing. And as you can see, there's almost nobody here. Now this is very out of season for Ibiza. One of the main things to do here is to come and enjoy the nightlife because it's home to some of the most famous clubs on the planet. But a lot of their closing parties will have taken place by now because it's almost November. So when we were driving along, quite a lot of the hotels, all the waters drained out the pool, everywhere seems to be getting sort of refurbished and repainted and the streets are deserted. I mean, even in the space of time of me talking to you here, no one is here, which is 
lovely. It was a very different experience from when I visited last time because that would have been, when would that have been? Probably about May, June time and it was starting to feel pretty busy for the summer season. But this right now is like another world. So look, I mean to update you on our second mission regarding Halloween, we're no further forward. I'm not overly confident. I noticed a little shop down the bottom that I think I can buy candy and sweets and things in, but I'm not feeling great about the Halloween <laughs> costume slash t-shirt because every tourist shop here seems to just sell fridge magnets, soap, jugs, like all the typical things that you would buy in a Spanish gift shop. So, <laughs> don't know, I'll maybe find an H&M or a Zara or something and see if they have anything seasonal. Otherwise, it'll be into Malaga tomorrow to really clutch straws and see what I can do. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, let's tune out here, go and enjoy this view, have another walk around the old town and I will see all of you back down to go shopping. Okay, now back down the hill and about to try and go shopping now. I really don't have high hopes for this. Barcelona was very Halloween-y. There's literally nothing here. <laughs> I have no idea why. So yeah, I don't think we're going to tick off both missions today. Worst case scenario, let's just try and get sweets. And then we can do the costume tomorrow or I can try and find something on the ship. Because, yeah... I have no idea what I'm going to do because it's basically just chain shops that are here and then all the tourist shops, as I say, are just selling I Love Ibiza merchandise which doesn't really, doesn't really help the cause. So look, let's try and find a supermarket, have a pot around the shops but I don't think it's going to come too much and then I'll give you an update before we head back to the ship. Into Zara we go. I had all the high expectations of being able to come in here and get copious amounts of Halloween merchandise. <laughs> However, all I found was a lot of really beige, black and grey clothing. <laughs> yes, definitely not what I needed. Anyway, shopping aside, I gave up pretty quickly. I decided to head over, cut my losses and get into this little mini supermarket where my day was about to take a turn for the better. Guys, Halloween is back on. I have just found, these are perfect. This one I was dubious about this given the tone of Virgin at times, but this is individually packaged. Love Heart lollies, which I'm gonna have to be very clear. The Love Heart isn't anything to do with my cabin. So yeah, Love Heart lollies. And I also thought, look, if I get stuck with these, I'll be raging if I get stuck with how many are in there, like 30 Love Heart lollipops or something. But one thing that I wouldn't mind getting stuck with would be Kinder Bueno. Now in Spain, you can get Kinder Bueno minis, which are all individually wrapped. So that's gone well. So we've now got lollipops, we've got chocolate to put in the pumpkin. <laughs> My luck. Someone will just come and swipe the entire pumpkin in one sitting, and then this will just go in someone else's cabin. But <laughs> let's keep the faith that people will all play the game. So yeah, look, we've got candy at least. We don't have any, I mean, the outfit situation has been a disaster today. There's, there's just nothing here. There are, there are so many nice shops, but everything, everything is white or beige or black. That must be the, I don't know, the new thing, but there's literally nothing about. So yeah, I mean, I have fake blood in my cabin, so I might just go out, I don't know, covered in fake blood and hope the best. <laughs> yeah, look, my plan now, anyway, I am going to think about heading back to the ship because the shuttle finishes running about 45 minutes before all aboard, which is in about an hour and a half from now. So that's the beauty of spending so long on cruise ships and visiting these places multiple times is that you kind of switch your mindset from running about mad trying to see everything to, OK, let's head off for a few hours, have a nice afternoon and then head back. So. I've got a dinner reservation tonight, which I'm going to talk to you about when we get back, but that's like 6.30 p.m. So we actually don't have long until that point. So I'm keen to get back and hopefully show you a little bit more of the ship before dinner and also talk to you about the plan for tonight. So yeah, let's head over towards the marina and jump on the shuttle bus back and I'll see all of you back in the cabin on board Valiant Lady.
Okay guys, so I'm now back on the ship, back in my little inside cabin. The lighting in here seems a bit intense today, but basically the way the lights work in the cabin, right, is via this little tablet that I'll try and put a separate video on to show you. But basically the way that you work it is that you've got the temperature, you can control the, the air condition on here, so if I turn that down a little bit because it's warm, I can then turn the ceiling light up, so that should make it really bright, but that's far, <laughs> that's far too bright to talk to you. We've then got the desk lamp that we can toggle on and off over there. We've then got the lights in the background that we can toggle on and off. All in all, very impressed with the lighting in here actually. And I really like the fact that it's all controlled on here. Makes it very clever. Now, I can actually control the TV from here as well. I'm going to do a separate video to show you. Just because, like, oh, we'd have to flip the camera and all that is a bit more complex. But, yeah, really big fan of this. Now, anyway, as you know, I am now back on the ship. Sweets are under the cabin, safely tucked away for tomorrow, along with all of my decorations for outside my cabin. So, <laughs> come back tomorrow and let me show you what it looks like to decorate for Halloween. Now, what am I going to go and do? I have got the daily schedule for tonight. Here. So, this is what Virgin called glance at, yeah, a glance at the day. Now, it's worth noting that, I mean, I like to get a printed daily schedule in every ship that I go on. I also keep them for further, like, further referencing back to and things. Because I quite often get asked questions about certain ships and it's really good to have, like, my folder with all my daily schedules that I can just flick to. I know, ship geek, but... <laughs> to be fair, with this YouTube channel, I can't even pretend not to be a ship geek. So yes, I'm not even ashamed. But on this ship, everything's digital. So you have to go to one of four venues. And you'll find those venues just on the front of the leaflet here. So you've got the chart room, the grounds club, grounds club 2, or sailor services. When you go there, there's a little tray full of these every single day. So you just swing by, pick one up, and then you're sorted. Now... My plan, now I've got dinner booked in Razzle Dazzle, which is one of the onboard restaurants that I'll tell you a little bit more about when we go down, but I've got that booked for 6.30pm tonight, because I'm planning to not have a mega late night tonight, because we're back in port tomorrow, and there's plenty of time on this ship, due to the fact that we're at sea, all the way across the Atlantic, there is plenty of time to have big nights out but tonight I don't think tonight will be one of them I will definitely take you to a few different things but we just won't be out until three o'clock in the morning <laughs> so dinner is slightly earlier for me tonight so half past six after that I am then going to head to the first of our Halloween party nights so last night with the Halloween pajama party tonight we've got the Halloween festival of frights in the manor which I'm really looking forward to that it sounds maybe a little bit circusy, clowny, not entirely sure what to expect, but I think it, it might be really good. So I'm going to go down to that, and after that there's like a dance show in the Red Room, which is Virgin's answer to the traditional cruise ship theatre. Now I have seen that show before, and I will have showed you that show before in my Scarlet Lady vlog series a few ships ago. So I, I know that I'm going to really enjoy that. So I'll go have a look and see what's going on. Now, apart from that, if you weren't coming on the ship with me and you were trying to see what else you could get up to while on board, you could go to... So there's a solo traveller, solo sailor evening meetup that you could go to. I can't because dinner's at the same time. Um, you could then go to various things at the shops. There's live music pretty much everywhere. So you've got live music at the dock, which is at the back of the ship. The Roundabout, which is the main circular atrium. Sip Lounge, which is beside the main theatre. On the Rocks. Yeah, there's there's live music all over this ship. It's what I really like. And another thing that I love about on here is that the top deck has constantly got, like, pretty loud, almost club-style music playing well into the night. I absolutely love when the climate is warm enough to allow it to just go up there, grab a drink, and chill out on a lounger for half an hour. It's so relaxing now final point from me before we talk about or before we think about heading down to dinner once i change is climate now i think i would have mentioned earlier it's almost november and i always thought november in this part of the world would be dropping in temperature and it would be getting pretty chilly now that i mean today has been absolutely beautiful yesterday was beautiful they don't put the weather on the schedule actually 
but I think tomorrow's to be pretty good. So yeah, really impressed with the weather so far. And what struck me today is that people were dining outside all day today at all the cafes. They were sitting outside having a beer outside the bars. And it almost felt like summer again, which was really lovely. Granted, in a couple of weeks' time, I think that cafe culture on the streets will be well and truly gone because it'll probably be so cold here. But it's lovely to see Europe in this sort of transition period between summer and winter. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, let's think about dinner. So, I am going to go get changed, see all of you down at Razzle Dazzle, and then I'll come back and wrap up at the end of the night. So yeah, see you in a bit, guys. On my way to dinner, I checked out the top deck to see if we might be getting ready to leave Ibiza or to see if I could catch another sunset on this cruise. If you haven't been following me for too long, you might not know, but I absolutely adore a sunset, especially when you're out at sea. Tonight, it was approaching that time, but it was probably far too cloudy to see much more than what I'm showing you now. Absolutely beautiful, though. Anyway, let's head inside, let's head downstairs, and let's head along to tonight's dining venue, which is Razzle Dazzle. You can see that as we walk around the ship here, the way that Virgin design a ship is really, really modern, and actually really different to what I've seen from most of their competitors out there. Razzle Dazzle is one of my probably least favourite restaurants on board, but I do like to try it every single time I cruise with Virgin. You can see the starters and the mains here, and after we've enjoyed them, I'll then show you what I order for dessert. I like to show you the menu so that you can see if our orders might actually align. For my starter tonight, I opted for chicken wings, which were okay, they were a little bit on the dry side, but still pretty good. And that was all washed down, speaking of dry, with a cocktail, which was the polar opposite. This was really good, and my main course was then cauliflower, now this is a particularly unusual main course for me, but I did really enjoy it. Moving on to think about desserts, because the portions for my starter and my main weren't really too big. So when the dessert menu was offered tonight, I knew it was a no-brainer. And that was to go straight on to creme brulee, which I don't know about you, but I think there's enough fruit on this that that could count as a potentially quite healthy option tonight. Afterwards, it was into the show that I told you about, which was the Halloween performance through in the manor. This ended up being very different to what I expected it to be. I thought it was going to be quite circusy, quite trapeze, and people swinging from the roof. However, it ended up a show led by the diva, who is the onboard drag artist, and taken part in by all the happenings cast. Now, I really enjoyed this. If you've seen my other videos from Virgin, you will know that I am such a huge advocate of what Virgin are doing with drag on this ship. I think it's great to see what has historically been quite a niche style of performance art becoming pretty mainstream, so well done, Virgin. After that show, it was then time to head out of the manor and into the Red Room, which is Virgin's take on the traditional cruise ship theater. Rather than talk over all of this, I'll leave you to see what this show entailed. But when you walked in, it just looked like a standing room only type of show. And what was really cool was that as the show developed, the stage then moved round. So you weren't ever able to have a bad view in here because chances are, wherever you stood, if the stage wasn't there to begin with, it probably would be <laughs> pretty much in front of you by the end of the show. Anyway, as I say, I'll leave you to have a look at some of this and I'll see you up in the cabin after the show.
Right, just like that, it is the end of the night. And you know what? I've had an absolute ball tonight. The thing that I think I'm appreciating most this week is just everything being consistently good. Like, I actually, at the moment, I have nothing to complain about on this ship. Like, it's all going so well. The crew seem excellent. The entertainment is very good. The food is brilliant. Yeah, I'm not really... Yeah, I'm, I'm struggling. I'm really struggling to pick a hole anywhere on this cruise. And that is good, because if you remember a couple of ships ago, there was one ship in particular and one cruise line in particular, I'm not going to name names though, that fell very short in almost every single one of my expectations, to be perfectly honest. But yeah, it's lovely to have that clawed back, because when you come on ships like this, and when you get an experience like I'm having right now, yeah, you just realise what it is about cruising that we all absolutely love. But, yeah, I can't actually believe it's the end of the night. I have got my final cocktail. Let me show you what that is, actually. So, it's it's like a gin cocktail. So, this is it here, which I'm hoping you can see. So, it's a gin cocktail, which has got chamomile tea in it. So, <laughs> I reckon I'll be asleep at the end of that one, but... Yeah, thought I'd grab that. Amazingly, when I ordered it at the bar, it got delivered to me in a teapot, which I definitely wasn't expecting. But yeah, I'll do a separate video to talk to you about the drinks offering on here, because loads of you have messaged me on Instagram since I got on this ship to ask if the bar tabs are worth it or if you should be adding more to your account before you board. So yes, I will hopefully try and provide a little bit of transparency about pricing on a Virgin Cruise because it's evident from what's coming in here that that's necessary because I think people are a wee bit confused out there at the moment. Now tomorrow we will be docking in Malaga and we'll be there for two full days. Now I'm currently undecided on the plan for tomorrow to be perfectly honest with you because it's Halloween and I've also been to Malaga before. So I don't think I'm going to go ashore and vlog that because I've already done it and you can check that out in my Costa series. So yeah, the plan tomorrow to be confirmed, but what I can assure you is that I'll be doing some kind of video <laughs> from tomorrow. Now, I reckon what it's going to look like, to be honest, is a day on board a cruise ship celebrating Halloween because it's going to be pretty different on here to any other day on a cruise ship that I've had yet and I cannot wait. So yeah, make sure that you come along and check out my next video. Now, if you are new here, then it would be brilliant if you would think about joining and coming along on the journey by clicking subscribe underneath. And whether or not you're new, give, it, give the video a like. That would be absolutely brilliant because that just helps to push my content to more and more people out there. But look, wherever you're watching from out there, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch me pardon the pun, floating about, oh, sorry, on, <laughs> on this cruise ship. Um, enjoy the rest of your day, and I will catch up with you in my next video. And all that's left to say is cheers, guys. Good night. Bye. If you enjoyed this video today, did you know that you can become a member of my YouTube channel for an exclusive behind-the-scenes look at some of the ships that I'm traveling on. If you're over on Patreon, then I would love to see you over there. All you have to do to join me on that community is just search www.patreon.com forward slash Fraser at Sea. Both my YouTube memberships and my Patreon site lead directly to me getting on more cruise ships and both offer a completely behind the scenes look at what's going on.